Hey YouTube, it's Lindsay Stitches. Welcome to my channel and my first ever video. Today I am going to talk to you about my 2020 embroidery journal, my 2022 embroidery journal, as well as showing you how to get started on your own embroidery journal for this year or a year in the future. So first up, I'll tell you a little bit about my 2020 embroidery journal. I started this as just a personal project at the start of 2020. I wanted a way to hold myself accountable and keep myself motivated to try and do something creative every day. At the end of 2019, I'd seen a few people posting their finished 2019 embroidery journals and I thought, that's it, that's for me. The first thing I stitched on there was a, um, our rooftop tent because we were camping on the west coast of Tassie. This came with me everywhere throughout the year. It moved over to Western Australia with me. It came on road trips uh, up and down the coast of Western Australia. And I finished it um, on another camping trip. It's the last thing I stitched on it was a little picture of myself because I felt like I deserved it. So once my 2020 embroidery journal was finished, I entered it in an exhibition uh, in Esperance, which is where I was living at the time. And it was called Art of Isolation. So it was anything that was done throughout the lockdown or was about the lockdown, somehow related to isolation and COVID essentially. Anyway, I entered it. I came away with the People's Choice Award. So yeah, that was pretty cool. A little bit later in 2021, I submitted my 2020 embroidery journal into the craft category of the Frankie Magazine Good Stuff Awards. Uh, there was a judge for each category. So I was very lucky to be chosen by Pip Lincoln as the winner um, of that category. Um, so with that, I got a feature in Frankie Magazine, which came out in October last year. Just after that, I got contacted by Molly Makes Magazine, which is from the UK. They asked me to write a little column about um, committing to a long-term craft. Got a little feature in their magazine. So yeah, every all of that was totally unexpected. Totally not my intention going into stitching something every day, um, but that was what happened accidentally. I think I chose a really good time to do an embroidery journal. I obviously had no idea what was in store in 2020, but I think that the fact that there were so many people in lockdown and in isolation, it gave people something to sort of follow along with. I was obviously incredibly lucky because I was in Western Australia where there was essentially no COVID. I was free to move around the state and go on trips and all of that sort of stuff. I know that a lot of other people were not that lucky. This year I've decided to do another embroidery journal. I'm hoping to make a video once a month giving you a little bit of an explanation about the things that I have stitched on there, why I stitched them. I know it's kind of late, but there is still time to start one of these if you want to, even if you don't stitch something every day. You can even just wait till the end of your month and stitch some of your highlights from the month or, you know, even if you start now and you kind of make everything up for what you've done in January, no one's gonna know. Alrighty, so first up, I'm gonna show you all of the supplies that you're gonna need to start your own embroidery journal in 2022 or in the years following. Uh, and secondly, I'm gonna show you how I drew the segments onto my embroidery journal for this year. Uh, and lastly, because your embroidery journal is going to get a lot of use and you're gonna be touching it a lot, it's gonna start fraying around the edges I will show you the best way to prevent that from happening uh, so you can keep your fabric nice and strong throughout the year alrighty so I've got everything here that I need to start an embroidery journal for 2022 so the first thing is an embroidery hoop if you don't really know what how an embroidery hoop works you have a little screw at the top it's split into two pieces that you can pull apart and then you put your fabric in between the two and pull it nice and tight and that way you can stitch on it. So this hoop and my embroidery journal for 2022 are 225 millimeters in diameter. In 2020, my hoop was only 200 millimeters in diameter. So everything was super tiny. Everything is still gonna be super tiny this year, but maybe very slightly bigger than in 2020. Next up, you need a piece of fabric. I just use Calico, it's from Spotlight. It costs about $2.50 a meter. You can get it from pretty much any craft store. So wherever you go, you should be able to find a piece of calico. Another thing that you'll need is a diary or a notebook. I'm using my 2022 diary from Frankie. It's got a week to a page. So I'm writing the thing that I'm stitching for the day on the day that it relates to. There's also some little notes sections down the bottom. So I'm 
doing some practice drawings of the things that I'm stitching down there. So now for some of the smaller things that you'll probably have to buy more than once. Uh, first up is a pen. I get a Pilot friction pen that comes off with heat. So usually I just use a hairdryer or the tip of the iron. Sometimes you can see a little bit of a white mark if you have gone quite dark with the pen. If you're stitching over it, it doesn't really matter anyway. So I get those from Officeworks, but I think you can find them probably at newsagents or on office supply stores online. I use that one to firstly draw my template onto my embroidery journal and then I use it throughout the year to draw my little patterns for my pictures onto my embroidery journal before I stitch them. Next up, you'll need a pair of embroidery scissors. Embroidery scissors have a really tiny tip on them so that you can get nice and close to your fabric when you're cutting your threads. You don't really want to accidentally cut the fabric of something you've been working on for a year. So best to use something super tiny so that you can get nice and close to your threads. Next up, you'll need a bunch of embroidery threads in whatever colors you want. My favorite embroidery thread brand is DMC. They have over 500 colors of embroidery threads, so there's no limitations on colors that you want to choose. They probably cost between a dollar and a dollar fifty at craft stores depending where you go. Last you will need some needles. I use birch embroidery needles in a size 7. That's another thing that you'll probably need to buy several times throughout the year. I tend to lose my embroidery needles. The last two things that you'll need to start your embroidery journal are things that are just to help you draw the template onto your fabric. So I printed off a circle that is split into 12 segments. I just cut that out and place it on my fabric while it's in the hoop. It doesn't really matter if it's the same size as your hoop as long as you can kind of place it in the middle and then I use a ruler to extend the lines and make them try and make them as even as I can it doesn't really matter if your segments aren't totally even all of the pictures on my embroidery journal just go all together and there's no evidence of those initial template lines on there okay so here I'm gonna show you how I fit my fabric into my embroidery journal and then draw my template on there separate the two parts of the embroidery hoop place the fabric in the middle. So I like to have my fabric quite a bit bigger than my embroidery hoop just so that I have enough fabric there that I can keep pulling at it and tugging it and tightening it throughout the year. If you cut it too close to the hoop, you haven't got a lot of fabric to grab onto and help you to tighten the fabric in the hoop. So I just tighten my fabric in my hoop until it sounds like a drum. I'll grab my ruler and my pen and I'll try to find as best I can the middle of the circle. So I'll just put a little line here. So basically about here is the center of your hoop. If you put a little hole in your printed circle, you can kind of place that on there and that's basically where the center of your hoop is. Then I grab my ruler and I just draw the ends of those lines, horizontal, vertical, whatever it is, and then all of the other lines as well. Once you've done that, you can pull your printed circle off your fabric and then finish off your lines so that they all go through that center of the circle. And that's pretty much your 12 segments drawn onto your embroidery journal. Once you've got your template on your embroidery journal, you can put the year in the middle. In 2020, I just wrote 2020, but in 2022, I have jazzed it up a little bit and stitched a little border around it. The other thing that I do is instead of just leaving the line and the heat erasable pen on there, I actually do a running stitch across the whole thing because you'll be using a hairdryer or the iron to remove your drawings after you've stitched your little pictures. Um, this will always rub off. So I just do a running stitch along it. I just do that so I don't have to draw the lines again 360 times throughout the year. And with the edges folded over I just do a blanket stitch right around the inside edge. Your blanket stitch should turn out looking something like this. Mine is absolutely not perfect because I'm gonna take it off anyway. But yeah, that's pretty much it. 
And that's the end of my first video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was helpful. And mostly I hope that you take on your own 2022 embroidery journal. Like I said, I know it's late in the year. We are in February now, but I think that if you look back through your photos and have a think, you'll still be able to find some good memories that you'll be able to stitch for January. If you want to keep up with my 2022 embroidery journal, I'll be sharing it monthly on Instagram. You can find me there at lindsay underscore stitches. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.